What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Master Wing channel. We are back for some gameplay. Can't wait to uh, see what this game has in store for us. Um, we're hopping right into it, y'all. Chimney Swift, turn one. Uh, we have a few Chimney Swift games. I like it. It's Star Nest. We're moving around. I'm sorry I didn't catch the um, starting hand selection. Uh, the other two birds were trash. Uh, but I'm hitting record just in case. You never know if something good's going to happen. And I'm looking at this second end around goal. My opponent played turn one kill deer. Turn one kill deer. Um, I'm going to gain food right here. Probably move it down to the wetlands. And then I can play the superb liar bird in the forest. Dude, I'm excited. Um, we have a no goal for the second end around. And for the first time, I've played a ELO ranked game where the kill deer is not house ruled. Um, they looked at the house rules again on the Wingspan Tournament Discord. And they're keeping the Ravens to save to round two. But the Franklin's goal and the kill deer, you can play in round one now. So um, it's going to be a tricky game, but you can see we got a bronzed cowbird that we're waiting for. So that could go nicely um, going up against uh, kill deer. Man, starting off with a bang. A uh, superb liar bird I've been keeping a lot more just because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you never, you know, I wasn't dealt a great forest bird. So the liar bird just kind of secures something in the forest. So if my opponent does, then I can copy it. Uh, looks like the first end around is birds in the wetlands. You know, assuming my opponent is focused on the grassland in the forest, you know, I'm thinking a kill deer game is not going to have a lot of wetland birds in it. Um, my opponent plays the gold crest. I really like the gold crest. Uh, that goes great with the KD. So he's going to discard extra cards and play forest birds. And I'm thinking about this scaled quail. But it's not my go-to. Um, I'm hoping this cowbird can go down. Let's see. The tray... We could gain a rat and reset, but I don't really like that either. We have five turns. I could draw cards, just see what we get here maybe, in case we get something better for some reason uh, for this cowbird. Just double checking if I wanna gain food here, but uh, that'll work, that'll work. Uh, we'll move the Chimney Swift back up to the forest. I think that's the move. These, these, these migration powers, we got to be careful. I just want to make sure how I do this. If I move the Chimney Swift up, gain food once, play the Ibis, gain food again, play the Cowbird. I think that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, the hummingbird, I'm not going to pass out extra food. Especially not against a kill deer. So, yeah. This could be a crazy game. I don't know. Oh, man. I'm missing out on my cowbird activations, but that's okay. I think I will... I, I was hoping that he'd reset the bird feeder, but he already activated the kill deer, which is fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and discard this hummingbird and gain three food. And then play that ibis. Okay, we take a nectar. You know, normally end around goal uh, for round one I'm not super concerned but since we are playing against a kill deer and it is a no goal game and things could get ugly quick I'm going to secure our end of round goal and hopefully get four points maybe a three point 
advantage because uh, I'm going to need everything against this player. Stalled Bird is a very good player. I've played him before. Um, and they've got six cards ready to go for this gold crest. Um, I know we could reset the tray, but I don't want to. Because once I gain food, I'm going to move the Chimney Swift back down. So I need to play the Ibis first. It's not our best wetland option for sure, but it does let me tuck a card or keep a card from the discard pile. Australia, New Zealand, they call it the bin chicken because it, I guess it's in the trash can a bunch. So that power makes sense. Kind of like that they added a bird that pays attention to the discard pile. I'd be interested to see if the new expansions have anything to do with the discard pile. Because right now, I think that's the only bird, the Australian Ibis, that does that. C correct me if I'm wrong, though. Okay, so my opponent did activate the gold crest, it looks like. And played the woodpecker. And that is probably the bird I will primarily copy with the lyre bird. Yeah, so, uh, man, this lyre bird, please don't sleep on the lyre bird. Just about every game I play it, there's something worthwhile to copy, and that white backed woodpecker is perfect. I'm not getting my cowbird down as quickly as I wanted, but I just wanted to make sure we won that first end around. Sometimes. I don't know. Looking back on Raven or Killdeer games, I, I have to try to maximize any type of advantage we can. So, oh, see, there's their wetland bird, the rough. And here we go. We finally got our pink power down. This cow bird is, I feel, a little underrated with the nerfed um, grassland for Oceania, the cowbird, I mean, now when they're activating the kill deer, that is a zero point play. Because he's gonna discard an egg and I'm gonna take an egg. So, I mean, you can see why they they changed that rule, at least for the kill deer. Uh, but that rough is going to go to work. This could be a very dangerous board. Man, no goal round two. The only thing better than a round two no goal is a round one no goal. Of course, that adds extra turns to the following rounds. And we have a yellow hammer and Avocet in the tray. I would definitely be interested in the Avocet. Y'all, oh. y'all see what's happening here? They took the Avocet, but it was replaced by the Gala. Gala, Gala. Whoever you are. Definitely drawing cards here. I'm just debating whether I want this yellow hammer. I think I will. I think we're going to go for it. Um, the Gala, we could go Forest Gala. And then the Cowbird hopefully does its thing. Or we could stick the Gala in the Grassland and go Grassland versus Grassland here. Um, I think I will keep the green heron from the ibis. I have one fish, and if we use this yellow hammer, you never know when you need an, another card for the yellow hammer. So it's not the best card, but we'll keep it, and we can always discard it if we if we need to. Hmm. Then an Australian zebra finch in the tray. I think I want, yeah, so I think I want this Australian Zebra Finch. 
It could pair nicely with the Gala. If another player has a seed in their supply, you uh, get to tuck one. And honestly, the Tony Frogmouth could go with that too. I've had success with the Frogmouth. It's, it's expensive, but as my opponent uses the Gold Crest again to play the Chaffinch, that's just a boss bird with a kill deer. Not a hundred percent sure. My opponent isn't isn't looking at it. I may gain food while we can. All right, um, not the best re-roll that I've ever had, but I think uh, we're okay not um, not drawing cards right here. I, I still want that Finch in the Frogmouth, but I don't think my opponent's going to grab it. So playing it a little bit risky here just to collect some food. I thought this re-roll would be a little bit better, but... Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, what do we want here? I guess we'll take a worm for the frog mouth. I also moved down the chimney swift just in case I play the gala in the forest, but I'm talking myself into a grassland engine. Which I'm normally not doing a grassland engine in uh, Oceania. But I moved the chimney swift out of the way. My opponent plays a scaled quail. That's that's probably a good play for them. But I'm going to put the yellow hammer in the uh, forest. And I think I'm going to go hardcore uh, grassland here. Sometimes can be tricky because you've also got the pink power activating with a grassland. But I'm going to go ahead and take those two in the tray. And though those would be three solid... Um, grassland birds for me. So we'll just see um, if we can build a, a sufficient enough engine. I kind of like using weird birds on this channel if you haven't noticed. And the Australian zebra finch probably falls in that category. You don't see it often, but that gala is going to give my opponent seeds. So I should be able to activate that finch pretty frequently and just to keep things interesting uh, we also have a yellow hammer in play so trying to make that work this round we'll go ahead and keep the red shouldered hawk because it's cheap just in case I need to play it I'm, I'm being a little bit greedy I could be tucking under the ibis but with a yellow hammer and so many places to discard extra cards I'm not freaking out about the ibis not tucking uh, we also have ecologist bonus card as you saw haven't really talked about it much but i'm hoping i can get at least six points off that and my opponent plays the toey towie toey base game bird solid base game bird and that's another means for my opponent to have seeds aka my australian zebra finch so um, we're going to see how this plays out. This is super interesting. I just like the potential of this game just because I know it's going to be very challenging. And we're playing a little unorthodox. It's it's uh, got some yellow hammer aspect. It's going to have a grassland engine. Uh, let me know in the comments which direction you guys would go. I've also got a migratory chimney swift in play that I want to make use of. So... Oh, Blyce Hornbill in the tray. But my cowbird activated right in time. Um, Let's see, three turns left. I know I should probably deny this Hornbill. My opponent will probably get it. I think that would go great with the gold crest, but... I don't know, you can't deny it everything. And I don't want to spend a turn doing it. I want to 
get my birds down and, and start developing this grassland engine, maybe we can outlay eggs. Yeah, I think, I think we're done with the heron. Uh, we can go ahead and grab extra food. I love this lyre bird. Already broken record there, but star nest as well. These star nests are coming in clutch, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, without them, this cowbird would be useless. And we're gonna put another star nest down. Uh, let's see, we got six food, two turns. I do need to lay eggs once. see oh they did take the hornbill like we thought that's okay this game is gonna be crazy um we could play let's see my opponent has two seeds i'll go ahead and play the zebra finch i don't think that's gonna be an issue i could play frog mouth honestly i could play I could play Gala, Frogmouth, or Finch with the food that I have, but I need the Finch to come after the Gala. That, that's really the order that I'm worried about here. So that combo will work. And the Red-Shouldered Hawk is going to probably be just more egg fodder. We were a little late getting the cowbird down, but it's still already activated three or four times. So uh, that's really good news. I'm just hoping he's not having a, you know, a huge, a huge draw game with that kill deer. I mean, he could be picking up bombs for all I know, and we're just not even close. So yeah, we'll see. Um, so we lay our eggs for the yellow hammer. I don't know if I'm going to activate the yellow hammer this whole game, but this round I thought I could squeeze it in. Looks like we've got three five point birds and three birds that are less or uh, equal to or less than three points. So it's not looking like a super powerful board, but at the end of round one, I already had 32 points. I don't know if you, you saw that, but I looked at the scoreboard briefly. Um, and now we're going to force down this Gala, even though I probably could have waited. I, I did a little forcing right here. Um, I mean, if I'm being picky, I could have played Frogmouth, but I'm fine with the Gala. I want to try it. And nothing great in the tray. Again, we've got eggs in the platform nest. I think we should be in good shape for that one. I don't see any platform nests on my opponent's board. And we will go ahead and do the re-roll and get rid of this hawk. All right, so now we have enough space for the frog mouth and of course, I need to draw cards this game. Maybe we can make that this yellow hammer do something. And I wouldn't mind another brown power for this grassland. Uh, it's coming together nicely. I'm, I'm maybe going to run out of egg space, though, to just spam that grassland because the cowbird is going to be activating as well. Of course, with a no goal, sometimes I have issues with the yellow hammer and the no goal because... You don't think it's that many more turns, but usually in a no-goal game, somebody fills the entire board, and especially with a yellow hammer on top of that, sometimes I even run out of room. So we'll see how we manage that. Man. I feel like this game is a little bit more intense. Uh, we did take a slight break from Wingspan, but we are back, and we have that hunger again, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're excited to play, and my opponent played the Rufus Owl, which is clutch. It's pretty much a guaranteed Predator Tuck in the forest. They're utilizing that Gold Crest 
splendidly. And uh, we hope this frog mouth comes through. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point grassland engine if the frog mouth hits. I don't know the odds, but I think it's pretty good odds for the frog mouth. This cowbird doing work. All right, so now we draw cards and probably move the chimney swift over to the grassland. I might take this Merganser just because it's easy to play. Um, I mean, little penguin, I'm not sure that's the move here, but I do have the food for the Merganser, so if I activate this yellow hammer, at least I can play something. Um, should I keep or tuck? Don't think I'm gonna play either one of those birds. Sorry, that's my cat. Uh, I think I'm gonna tuck the card. I don't see a need. Oh, and we, we revealed the trumpeter swan, that's okay. I'm sure he takes it. If he does not, I will draw cards again. Everybody would love an eight point boost. Oh man, yep, there goes the swan. Uh, it's replaced with the rye bill. I don't think I want the rye bill either. Some people freak out over the rye bill. Um, I just glanced and there's only, there's only gonna be two discarded bonus cards, so. I don't think it's worth spending another draw cards turn. There's that frog mouth energy. I feel like my grassland is pretty strong now. Like I said, a seven point play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually a eight point play because of the, the four eggs. Sorry, my cat's being crazy. Um, yeah, so this is an eight point engine, y'all. Uh, it took a little time getting it going. I feel like it was maybe a little bit slow. But an eight point engine is nothing to laugh at. I think we're at least competing. That chaffinch that they have has not tucked much. So I don't know if he's just waiting to spam a bunch of tucks or if he has one of the eagles. Um, of course, he has to keep three cards for the rough. But they've got a lot of ammo for the next nine turns. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I, I want to know what y'all what your thoughts are on a yellow hammer no goal game have y'all ever run out of room or um you know picked up one of those uh predators that play on top of the bird sometimes i find the yellow hammer tricky to use with a no goal um you just run out of space so there's a northern mockingbird in the tray my opponent finally got that horn bill down um it's looking ugly guys this could be a bad recording, but as you know, we will upload win. We we will upload wins or losses, and I think this game is interesting enough that I'm gonna upload it. I think I want this Northern Mockingbird, people. I know that's only a two-point bird. It's late in the game. I might as well take the Rye Bill while it's available. And let's see. I'm always debating whether I want to keep or tuck. Snowy Egret. Oh. Guys, what are we doing? Now I leave the Atlantic Puffin. This game's gonna be ugly. Bro. 
I knew this game would be sick. Oh, the Puffin did not get snatched. He plays the White Stork. So that's a solid six point play. I'm wondering if they have Omnivore Expert. Mm, I don't know if I can pass up this Puffin, y'all. I'm gonna be running out of egg space. I don't have anything great to play next. And that Puffin, you, you're one bonus card away from a really good game. I feel like I, I need to take the Puffin. Another Star Nest. Um, and this might be my last time to draw cards in the entire game, honestly. I... Please. Yeah. We finally got a couple tucks under the ibis um yeah so now that i have a puffin and a few and that mockingbird i'm gonna play this mockingbird um i think i'm done drawing cards i'm probably done using the yellow hammer i think i've said in previous games look at this tray the kakapo and the red cockaded woodpecker i mean this tray has been crazy and now the whooping crane's there yo what is going on I feel like this is a kill to your dream, and I, I'm just worried about what he has in his hand. All right, so let's go ahead and gain enough food so that we can play a bird with this yellow hammer. We're also doing pretty well on this nectar battle. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but um, I think our forest is, that forest victory is secured because he's filled up the forest. And I want to copy the woodpecker again. I think I want the food. If I get the food, I could grab the berry for the mockingbird. And then that would free up some egg space. So my forecast for this round four, I think the yellow hammer is a trap. For, for me, not always in round four, but, um, and I know we have six turns in round four, but I really want to focus on this seven or eight point grassland engine that I've got going on. My only issue is I'm going to be running out of egg space pretty quickly. So I need, you know, two or three birds that I can play. And that's why I like to do gain food um, there so that I could... Play the Puffin and this Northern Mockingbird. But it's the end of the round. They're going to use their rough to grab the Whooping Crane, I'm sure. Uh, this is going to be a tough game, guys. I think it's going to be high scoring, but his board looks pretty good. Oh, man, dude. It's not what we needed today. Forester or citizen scientist. I got no other birds that can tuck, but I'm not going to do two more forest birds in the rest of this game. So I guess we take citizen scientist just in case uh, Benelli's or a goshawk shows up. That's a bummer. I took a I spent a turn drawing the puffin. I spent a turn gaining food for the puffin. I spent a turn. No, I didn't. I did I didn't spend a turn playing the puffin. That was yellow hammer, but I don't know. I needed that to be a non whiff. Uh, we're doing good on our end around goal. Come on, cat. Oh, the Starling shows up. My opponent has played the Bunting. I didn't catch the Bunting play. It's 
not looking good, people. I'm feeling a little deflated, but we're going to stick with it. I mean, six turns, we're going to score a lot of points. Let's go ahead and lay our eggs here. Probably move the chimney swift to the forest. And then that'll make way for the mockingbird. Tawny frogmouth is 100%. We'll take those. And with that ecologist bonus card, I mean, I have a few wetland options. I don't know. I wish I had a fish. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm not really worried about the yellow hammer this game. I really want to work my grassland as much as possible. They, they you know, for having a white stork and a kill deer and a towie, it's not a big point scoring grassland that they have. I think we have the better grassland. It's just... They have so many birds down between the gold crest and the kill deer. Um, I, I just don't know if we can pull this off, but we're trying. Uh, if you've hung with me to round four, we're pretty long winded here on this channel. I appreciate your support. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing for me, that little subscription click helps the channel of course get more views and you know maybe one day we can earn a quarter off of this channel but even if we don't we're gonna upload wingspan footage because we like this game i think the mockingbird is worthwhile here i know it's a neutral play when i play it at that fifth slot but to be able to copy the gala turns my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point engine into a 10 point engine if I can utilize that Mockingbird. So looks like my, oh, dude, I'm getting worked. Check out this double play, the Great Egret and the Abbot's Booby. We're trying to fight people. Um, we're, we're coming back, it's neck and neck, fourth quarter. Northern Mockingbird Energy. I just like this game because it's unique. We have a yellow hammer, we have a cowbird, we have a lyrebird, we have an ibis, a finch, a mockingbird, a chimney swift. It has been all over the place. Not really one dimensional, even though my grassland has been my, my major focus here. Um, I assume, yeah, he has the painted bunting, so we're both going to tie this fourth end around. And it really all depends on what he has left to play. I've only got 11 egg spaces left. And I wish I had one fish for this snowy egret or the mergancer, but I really don't want to waste turns i think i need well just with every game you need every single point but i'm going to ignore this yellow hammer and keep keep going with this engine the grassland is not dead is not dead in oceania come on team Hey, I think the Gala missed. I mean, uh, I don't think I gave away a free seed with the Gala that time. Uh, but now the second time I do. This Frogmouth is doing work. Pretty straightforward these last three turns. I'm just going to run out of egg space. But it's a 10-point play. Be honest, how many people would have picked up that Zebra Finch? Come on, team. That's a weird play, but I think it goes with the Gala. I wanted to try that combo. And Rosé, Spoonbill, and the Frigate Bird in the tray. I assume they use the White Stork there, and they'll take the... Maybe the Spoonbill? Yeah, they took the Spoonbill. 
That's fine. Oh, we took the frigate bird too. So they did utilize the kill deer. What an epic game. So I'm sitting at 10 birds and this is how I'm gonna end the game. And he's sitting at 13 birds. <laughs> Golly. Let's do it. Let's run this engine, baby. One thing we don't have going for us, our ender rounds are going well for us, but our bonus cards are not. I'm going to end this game with four bonus points. If he kills me on bonus points, I'm, I'm wondering if he has a 130 game. I don't know, though. We do have a lot of tucks. 17, 19 tucks, four caches, 18 eggs. I mean, we have more eggs. Oh, there goes the black naughty. It's either gonna be really good or really bad. Golly, that board looks scary. He's got three bonus cards. So uh, we could gain food and play a bird. We could draw cards, gain food, and then the yellow hammer would be activated. Drawing cards would be a one point play. Gaining food would be a zero point play. And if I don't have a good bird, I feel like sitting at 108 points. I don't think the yellow hammer's the best play here. I'm kind of stuck trying to activate those teal that teal power. Um, if I had a bonus card bird to play, I'm wondering if I gain food that's zero points and then play a wetland bird. But there's no fish in the bird feeder. I could score some points on the ecologist play, but. I'm looking at this grassland and I think that's the best move. Yeah, one, two, three, four. One, two. So this will be an eight point play. I'm not maximizing my egg space. But even then that's still scoring more points, so. It's a little bit inefficient. I wish I had another bird to play, but now I'm gonna still activate the grassland and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. A six point play if I do it again. So that's what we're gonna do, people. I'm sure I could have gained a different food resource somewhere. I probably could have tucked a couple more cards under the Ibis. You know, usually I can I can easily get rid of cards, but since that Mockingbird occup occupies the uh, fifth slot in the grassland, I can't really get rid of the extra cards. And here we go, last turn of the game. Benelli's eagle, Benelli's freaking eagle. That's probably the icing on the cake. Um, I've already explained that I think my grassland is still my highest point scorer. scorer. Uh, we got 10 birds down, they got 15. Turn one, kill deer. Frogmouth, I still like you. Um, to my opponent, I thought you played an excellent game. Probably look back and find something I didn't do. You know, four cards in my hand. I think the Ibis could have had a couple more tucks. And we'll see what their bonus cards do. But that Gold Crest killed your combo. I really like it. You're just always going to have, not always, but you're probably going to have more cards to use for the Gold Crest. And then they also had the Rough. 
So we'll see. We'll see. It may be closer than I think. It just looks like a massive difference in bird points here. With 15 birds versus 10. But, uh, you know, here we go. We will have the advantage on Nectar. So we got a three-point advantage on Nectar. Here we go, people. Moment of truth. See how many bird points they have. This is going to be bad. 66 to 41. 15 bonus points. We do have more eggs, though. Come on. Hey, our food, our frog mouth. We had more tucks. We won with the nectar. What? 127, 122. I did not expect to win that game. I thought we were behind. We had four bonus points, y'all. Dang, that's crazy. They had bird counter, enclosure builder, and grassland data analyst, but they only had one egg. Oh, what a game. What a game. I felt like we were the underdogs there. Maybe a little bit of an upset. Um, Gala Mockingbird busted. Thanks for watching, y'all. Y'all have a good day. Peace.